What's up, everybody? Welcome to my video here about detection engineering coming to you live from the Anvilogic SOC. No, actually not. It's just a virtual background. You know how that works. All right. Today, what we're going to talk about is what is detection engineering and why you need it. So let's start with the definition. There's a few floating out there. All right. This is not the textbook. This is not the Webster's. This is a definition that I've kind of compiled together. But, um, you know, a lot of folks out there doing this. So let's check it out. Detection engineering, or DE, is the practice of researching, building, testing, deploying, validating, and maintaining rules, searches, and methods of detecting adversarial or otherwise unwanted behaviors on your computer systems. Yeah, that's a mouthful. All right, there's quite a bit to unpack there, and this practice in general is very nascent and evolving. So, I would love to get your thoughts on a definition if you disagree. What did I miss? What would you add? Put it in the comments down below, right? You know how this works. I'm always learning and I'm always interested in a constructive dialogue. So if you got something to add, you know, and don't want to just play stump the chump, would love to start talking with you. Now, breaking down that definition, it can be tempting to treat this simplistically and think that DE is not difficult to do, but we know that's not true, right? <laughs> if it were simple to detect adversary behavior, we wouldn't have ransomware, high profile hacks in the news, or a sim full of false positives, right? That's like a boatload or a boat full or a truck full. It's like a sim full, right? <laughs> so first, this first step it mentioned is the, is the research and understanding of the unwanted behavior, right? What exactly are we trying to detect and why? Is it based off observed incidents where we're getting threat intelligence reports and we can build it that way? Or is it more theoretical and hypothesis based that we've come up with in a threat hunt if somebody were to be targeting us? Both can be valid, but we don't have time to do everything. So we have to prioritize, right? And so that's where it's important to have a threat model for your organization that drives where you start with detection engineering. Now, the next part is that the mechanics of building, testing, and then actually deploying those rules. Now, this is usually tool dependent, although the Sigma project has helped to provide some convertibility in the space. In many cases, Sigma does a great job of providing good detections for common use cases. But my main concern with Sigma is that not all the detections, I'm sorry, that all of the detections are generally standalone, right? They're designed to be used independently of one another without dependencies. They're tuned individually where you have to come up with, you know, detailed allow lists and, and good known processes or good known um, uh, IP addresses in your environment. But there's not really a great built-in way to combine the results or correlate across them. Yeah, they're trying to, they're trying to use uh, Sigma correlation or Sigma meta rules to try to do this, but still it's, um, you know, not very standardized and, and kind of built in, if you will. It's, it's just a lot of do, do it yourself and roll your own. So, um, you know, after that, right, there's obviously the process of validating and maintaining those rules, which is kind of what I was getting at a second ago is there's always a lot of maintenance, right? There's things that you have to do in terms of making sure that those rules don't just go crazy and generate thousands of alerts, which is useful for nobody. And then, of course, the validation part is you have to actually make sure that the rule fires on the expected behavior. You can do that with third party tools. You can do that with Atomic Red Team, great open source project. Um, but it's, it's an important necessary component of detection engineering. Now, um, let's kind of transition into the, the methods part, right? I talked about rules and searches and kind of process of getting that in, but I wanna talk about the methods in my definition. Because effective de detection engineering is more than just coming up with a list of needed rules and then writing and deploying them. We've tried that for a while in our industry and that merely gets us that sim full of alerts that we talked about earlier for our analysts to sift through. So what I'm convinced of is that there there's needs to be a two-tiered detection framework for content, okay, for detection content. The volume of the raw data is just too large for us to do effective correlation and detection on the raw data directly. We have to use a mid-tier. Now, this idea of a two-tiered strategy has been showing up in multiple places over the last few years, so it's clearly having an impact and gaining some traction. Of course, <laughs> the idea of correlation is not new, right? We've all tried this for a while. It's just been very difficult to achieve across data sources um, and then also due to several main complicating factors of the data normalization as well as the compute resources required uh, due to the volume of raw data to be searched or, uh, or held in memory, right? If you're trying to do this over a long time period, then your volume grows rapidly and it's just, you know, almost impossible to be able to do. 
So a two-tiered strategy helps solve both of these main problems. Now, to break it down, the concept is basically that the first pass of detections run against the raw data, right? So if we start with the raw data at the top, the most volume, we run a, a series of detections against that to find individual behaviors of interest, such as encoded PowerShell or Windows macro execution. These are things that are interesting, in a sense, but not worthy of spawning an investigation when they're found in isolation, right? We know that encoded PowerShell can be run by administrators or can be run by third-party software. It just puts the command in base64 encoding and then sends it across the wire, which is easy to, you know, makes it so you don't have to worry about spaces or other, uh, you know, funky characters in your commands or your script. Now, once these interesting behaviors are found, the search or rule then assigns a risk score, perhaps. It normalizes the entity, the host or the user, as well as other fields involved. And then it enriches that result with other metadata like MITRE attack tactics and techniques, for example, or Lockheed Martin kill chain phases or you know, any other organization specific contextual metadata. It then stores that record in the mid-tier table or index, right? Depending on which platform you're using. Then the next pass of detections operates against this mid-tier table or index and looks for a specific entity such as the host or the user, right? That either has an interesting combination of attack tactics and techniques that would match a threat scenario or that like the total risk score of all those events stacking up has exceeded a threshold defined for an allotted time period, like maybe within an hour or one day or seven days. So a good example of this to make sense is a combination of a Windows macro execution followed by an encoded PowerShell command within 30 seconds, and then maybe an outbound web connection directed to an IP address within, I don't know, 30 minutes, right? So trying to do that kind of search, right, which would involve, um, you know, endpoint data as well as maybe uh, web or network or proxy data, right? Trying to do that kind of search in a single pass against raw data would be ugly at best, <laughs> you know, take up a ton of search power and, and, and compute processing, or it would just be impossible at worst, okay? It just couldn't be done in some cases. So one of the key benefits of this approach is that the analyst doesn't have to respond to or even look at that mid-tier index until an entity matches a scenario, right, a combination, or exceeds one of our defined thresholds for the risk, and then all of the offending behaviors can be viewed at once, right? All of those are now part of that alert. The, the interesting things, the macro execution, the uh, encoded PowerShell, the outbound web request, those are all right there in one event. And so the analyst doesn't have to kind of sift through or try to manually piece those together. And now, again, in my opinion, this is the only strategy that makes defect effective detection engineering achievable, okay? Without this, you're literally just chasing your tail. So you can get bogged down in the tuning of individual rules ad nauseum, right? Which is frankly one of the least desirable tasks in cyber. You can not find bad behavior. You can get lost in the sea of alerts and allow a, a real attack to get through. All right, so I'll stop. I'll step off the soapbox for a minute there and that put that you know, method discussion behind us. I think that's a key method that we all have to think about. Now, it's important to note that all organizations will either need to do detection engineering themselves, outsource it completely to a third party, or do some combination of both. You're probably already doing detection engineering to some degree, but you ignore it at your peril. Why, you ask? Well, that's what we'll talk about now. Every organization needs detection engineering because every organization is a potential victim of ransomware, data breach, or other cyber attack. Now, I'm not trying to get all sensational or spread FUD, but negligence in cyber can lead to outcomes that really affect your business or even end your business, right? I'm going to put an article link down below, of, you know, some companies that literally were just shut down by ransomware, and you've probably heard of them too. So without detection engineering, you're trying to basically shoot a target with a blindfold on, okay? It's not going to work. You're just going to be all over the place. Detection engineering brings the assurance of detection capability to the business through a test-driven process. Now, you know, I've I really love the way Bryson Bort explained some of this for detection engineering. Um, he gave a definition of how he would explain it to his CEO or to your CEO. And this was appearing in a detection engineering weekly newsletter. So shout out to Bryson Bort at Bryson Bort on Twitter for this definition. Shout out to Zach Allen for his detection engineering weekly newsletter. If you're not signed up for that, put a link in the comments below, highly recommend it. So here's the definition, right? It basically, I'm going to put it up on the screen, but it basically involves explaining to the business 
why detection engineering matters in their terms. He uses the, the PDCA, the Plan, Do, Check, Act cycle acronym, which was a business-driven iterative improvement process that was popularized by Deming, right? This is the name that he uses in this definition um, to basically say, look, you have to customize these things for your organization. There has to be things that apply to you. So detection engineering is the same through test-driven processes as this PDCA cycle to assure the business where the security team can detect and respond to what defines security, which is the threat. Again, kind of going back to this whole idea is we're starting from the threat, we're researching what these things can happen and, and be, then we're implementing these rules, we're checking that they work, and then we're continuing to maintain them going forward. So, you know, again, Trying to make sure that your management and your business side understands this and understands the value is so important because without this, again, it's that target with a blindfold on. You're not going to hit it. You're not even going to know what you're trying to do. So with that, I'm going to wrap this up. I hope you have a basic understanding of detection engineering. Would love to see your comments down below, what you like, what you didn't like, things you want to dive into more, things that didn't make sense. Let's keep the discussion going. Look for more videos coming soon. Thanks for your time today.